G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at two premium MiG-21s, one in the Russian tree and one in the German tree. This is the MiG-21S and SPSK. These planes are highly similar, the only real difference in them being their weapon system. These planes feature the same battle rating, the same flight characteristics, and of course, the same good old gun and radar systems, at least in practice. I'm not entirely sure if they should have the same radar systems, I'm not entirely sure if they should have the same anything really, I just know that in game they are basically the same thing. Today we're going to start with the MiG-21S. Now the MiG-21S is the one in the Russian tree as you can tell by the decals or the markings. Uh, speaking of decal, you should you should check out the description for my in-game decal. You know, you can get 3% off and I take a little cut of that as well. So, you know, you guys are supporting the channel, getting some stuff for free, and of course you get the in-game decal, which is pretty sweet. Anyway, MiG-21, we're going to be climbing, because MiG-21s are interceptors, right? And we're going to be intercepting some attackers, and there are plenty of attackers in these particular matches. Around 9.7, you're going to be finding a lot of Harriers, and a lot of F-105s. Now, this we'll save for later, but first we'll talk about the Harriers, shall we? The first one is the AV-8 and AV-8C, and of course the uh, Harrier GR-3. These three are the ones with AIM-9Gs, uh, they all have countermeasures, but the AV-8A has 240 of them, and is a lower battle rating, I believe. I mean, it kind of should be 9.7, maybe I should do a video on it. But regardless, the AV-8A is the one that you're going to be watching out for, simply because it's the one that can defeat your weapon systems. This plane is stuck with R3s, and R3Rs, R3Ss are the ones that you're going to be using. These are the primary way that you're going to be getting kills. Now, I personally recommend that you take two of each, because that gives you plenty of versatility. And if you're going to be climbing like me, then the radar is going to become more and more effective, because there's less ground clutter. The first target here we're going to look at is the Harrier, and this particular one is going to go down for the A5. I'm going to fire an R3R at this Harrier, and hopefully it is going to strike nice and golden. That is a GR1 out. Now the GR1 is the other type of Harrier that we're going to be having a talk about, because this plane has SRAMs and it's got four of them. So on the provisor that you stay out of harm's way, you should be okay. This plane has plenty of speed to defeat the Harrier. I think it tops out at 1270. Plus you have an afterburner, which gives you superior climb rate and altitude performance. Uh, and of course, whilst you don't have the acceleration, you shouldn't really be dropping down the speeds where you're going to be vulnerable to a Harrier, especially not when you know that there is one in the area. Stay fast, stay safe. Speaking of fast, I am running around at supersonic speed at about 4,000 meters looking for a target. I'm using my radar to try and scout out any targets that might be climbing, but there are none. So I'm going to go over to the ground attack area because it looks like my team has got it pretty much covered everywhere else. So I'm going to go and help out the MiG-19 here and uh, the other poor sod that just got shot down by the enemies there. There's two F-105Ds, three F-105Ds, four F-105Ds and a Harrier. So the first thing that we're going to be going for is an F-105D of course because that is easily the greater threat. I'm going to try and sneak in behind him uh, and try and get myself a good missile approach because the R3s are not really like the super powerful missiles that you might expect them to be. Of course these are only basic AIM-9s or they're loosely based off the AIM-9B but you know they're kind of worse because they have lower overload I believe or at the very least they have a very lo lower launch overload which means that while you're maneuvering you can't just fire them off willy-nilly. Now we have a Harrier in the midst of all this, and I believe that this is the Harrier GR1. So I've switched my uh, ACQ mode or uh, ACM mode on to my radar, and I've prepped an R3R ready to go. And have a look at this absolute beaning I get with this GR1. He fires an SRAM, and the SRAM cancels out the R3R. So you have to be very, very careful when you do go engaging Harriers like this, because at the very, very closer ranges, like 800 uh, and below, you can actually head on missile uh, with SRAMs, so you have to be really, really mindful of the engagements you're getting yourself into with a Harrier. I would try and avoid situations where you have no other option but to full afterburner head on. If you're going to head on, turn your afterburner off because that is going to save you. Now, fast forwarding a little bit, I have an AV-8 right behind me and this thing is practically dog food because doesn't look like he's paying attention, he's heading back to base, he's flying in a straight line, and of course I'm a MiG-21 so I can catch up to him pretty damn quickly. 
this is pretty much a done deal for this AV-8. I'm going to fire at 2.5 just because I'm at 3,000 meters, or 2.0 rather. That's going to give the missile plenty of time to reach its target and boom, very easy kill. Nothing really exciting about that one. What is exciting though is where are the last two players? You might be thinking, well, you know, surely they're in space or maybe they're at their airfield. I just didn't see them. But you would be wrong. They are, and I kid you not, all the way over by our airfield. Now, I, I don't understand why, I don't understand how, but um, they're, they're just sort of chilling over there. And uh, fast forwarding a little bit, the Lightning manages to snipe the A5C on the runway. I don't understand how that happens, because every time I go for a runway kill like that, or I come even within an inch of the range of those missiles, they'll open up like nothing else, and I die. However, when this particular Lightning decides that he wants to cowabunga and kill an A5C on the runway, I guess that's the A5C's fault for buying the A5C, because it is the devil's own. But that being said, it shouldn't really be happening. If the A5C, or if any plane for that matter, is landing and rearming, the airfield should do its utmost to protect that plane. If the enemy is, or if the uh, player is abusing the A airfield AA, uh, that should be something that is frowned upon and something that should be curbed. Now, I do detail this in a video. I will try and leave it in the description below, but it is one of the videos that I am, in, to be honest, the most proud of. Uh, so, Lightning here coming in. I don't even think he notices me. Now, with this particular plane, you are actually faster than the English Electric Lightning, which means that you can catch them in a straight line, you can outturn them, I think the only thing that you can't do is uh, super cruise faster than them, or, uh, or at least like no afterburner, straight line dogfight. You'll the lightning might win, but I'm pretty damn sure that the MiG 21S is better than the lightning in pretty much every single way. Maybe except for first turn, maybe something else. Let me know in the comment section below. But I am pretty damn sure. Maybe climb rate, climb rate might be the only thing. But yeah. The AV-8 is another one that uh, joins the club here with the airfield strafing. But my god, isn't that quite the sight to see the airfield AA doing a whole lot of fuck all and uh, a lightning that's not really paying attention. Let's move on to a match that's perhaps a little bit more on the exciting side. The MiG-21S is a plane that you don't really get too many, let's say, exciting matches to play. You're more a support fighter, you're more sitting on the periphery, and of course, you're more just sort of trying to stay fast and trying to get yourself some uh, kills on unsuspecting enemies. Your weapon system here is the one thing that is going to limit you and having R3s is absolutely a detriment to this plane. It means that it is a lot less capable than it otherwise might be um, and kind of limits it to being just a PFM with an extra set of missiles. It is kind of frustrating. It is kind of sad. I'm sure, I'm sure this thing should maybe like can it carry R60s? I have no idea. I'm not an expert on the subject, but uh, let me know in the comment section below. You guys, like I've always said, are a wealth of knowledge, and therefore, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about the MiG-21S. Did it carry R60s in real life? Did it carry even R13Ms in real life? Maybe there's a version of it that does. Let me know. Anyway, speaking of going after, I'm not going to call them easy kills, but I'm certainly going to call them kills of opportunity. These are planes that might otherwise not be paying attention. This uh, J-29D might become victim number one, but unfortunately I missed the shot, and the Su-7 might perish in this particular engagement, simply because there's an F-105D firing missiles, and the missiles unfortunately land. Now, the J-29 has pitched up so hard that it's lost all of its energy, and the F-105D is slowly regaining his. The T-2 is also in the same boat, so I'm gonna see if I can get myself another kill of opportunity, lining myself up again, this time I have one less teammate to work with though. So T2 is first, the T2 looks quite slow. I absolutely miss my shots, like where the hell am I aiming? And uh, managed to turn the plane around for another go. The F-105 is in the distance. So I'm gonna shoot the missile at the J-29D because it's slow and finish the T2 off with the guns before hopefully the MiG-21F is uh, saved. There we go, very nice indeed. It did cost me a bit more time than I was expecting. And I will say that if I had R60s, that engagement would have been a lot shorter than otherwise I would have hoped. Uh, perhaps I should have loaded the, up the R3Rs and gone for a little bit more long-range stuff. But 
that's uh, no time left to dwell on this. We have an F1 F5 coming in and trying to engage us here. Aim 9 es are fairly easy to dodge, you just have to keep your speed. And I think that's the one key with the MiG-21 that a lot of people sort of fail to realise. This plane, whilst you can turn, you need to keep your speed up because you're going to bleed all of your turn, your uh, energy in one turn. And that's just going to leave you vulnerable to other enemies, so you just need to make sure that you maintain the speed and pick one versus ones. Now, a one versus one with an F-105 is going to be an easy win, you just have to get him to commit to you. So there's really, you're basically left to to wish that this guy was dumb and, and did some dumb shit. But until then, you kind of just have to zoom around as a support fighter. Now, in this case, I've noticed that there is a friendly that is in a bit of trouble, and the F-105D looks like he might just be sitting on the periphery. So, A32A, which is basically a fat hunter, uh, or alternatively, a Lanson that is um, uh, just bad. It's uh, going to be a little bit difficult to see if I can get him lined up. I've managed to just get him in range, just waiting for that missile to uh, get within a nice little angle. And I've lined up the A32A, but unfortunately the G91 goes down. And this leaves me with another A32A who's not paying attention, which is kind of going to be the majority of your kills. And unfortunately for me, it looks like this A32A is starting to maneuver. When you get to this maneuvering stage, like you can sit behind the A32A all day long, because this thing is a pile of junk. But it's just a matter of getting your limited ammunition on target, and I'm really struggling with that. I've used up half my ammunition, there's the uh, almost the other half here, and the A32A is still yet to go down. Uh, looks like he's got no tail, so I'm just going to let him crash, and the Buccaneer decides that he wants to crash for me instead. But that's okay, because the MiG-21 F-13 gets the kill, which is much deserved here. So, the, the MiG-21S is one of those planes that is sort of very limited. You can't quite engage whatever target you want. You can't quite do whatever the hell you want because you, like I've said, are limited by your armament. It's not a plane that you can dictate the battle with. It's unfortunately relegated to being a support or alternatively a crutch for your enemies to uh, bash your team with. Anyway, moving on, we are going to do the SPSK. Now, I do have a bit more of a favorable opinion on the SPSK simply because it's one of those planes that has a little bit more versatility. Now you can swap out your guns for flares or chaff. Uh, you can also carry the R60. And for me, this gives this plane a little extra versatility and that's something that cannot be understated. Today, we're gonna to be using the R3s and the, uh, uh, like R3 and the guns, of course, but the Aviate Aviate-A, no, Aviate-C here is clearly on the ball clearly using his noggin and clearly dodging my missile. So, F-104 or F-100 is going to be engaging us here. We're pretty much on the front foot already, and these are the types of engagements you're basically going to be picking. You need to pick 1v1s, you need to pick them where your allies are not going to come in hard and fast and kill you. So, this case here is a perfect example. I've had to turn my attention away from the F-100 to the F-5C, and the F-5C gets really close up R3R. I really love to do these because they don't suspect them and they have such a little amount of time to react simply because they just don't have the uh, time because they're traveling so fast. Now the F100 coming in nice and close. I'm going to see if I can get a nice little uh, deflection shot onto him. Look how slow he is because he just can't handle that high altitude and the low speeds. He's a bit heavier. He's, I believe, slower. The F100 is in a little bit of a bad spot with all the, with all the fancy things coming out to this tier. And clearly the R3S didn't hit because I have uh, a skill issue. This is, this is clearly a, a problem with me and has nothing to do with the game. Anyway, finishing him off with a quick burst there from the R... Uh, what is it? The GSH-23? The R3S is the only thing that I have left, but that's alright because we're going back into the match with some R60s. These are your real killer missiles. These things at 9.7 are hella deadly. So. Uh, speaking earlier of the 105s, the F-105s are very, very dangerous to your uh, to your ability to do things, just because they're so fast. They have their ability to just get away from you, they have a top speed of like Mark 1.3, and of course when they're carrying bombs they're a bit heavier, and so that's exactly what I'm going to use and exploit. The F-105 really is going to struggle when it is carrying any ordnance, and an R-60 is going to finish it very easily. 
So we have a two versus one, uh, two versus two here with the F4C and the Jaguar. So who am I going to engage first? I'm going to go for a quick little head-on there with the F4C, who turns it into a not a head-on and then a yes head-on. And then I notice there's another F105C on my ass, so I'm going to prep the R60 while I'm dogfighting here. Stay out of his way, try and get a nice little R60, because I know if I can't get that F105, then the SU7 is not going to be able to get the uh, enemy either. But I've done exactly what I'm supposed to avoid, and I've bled too much speed. So the Jaguar finishes me with a quick missile. Bit sad, but there's nothing you can do except move on to the next match. And speaking of Jaguar, there is an enemy Jaguar looking towards the... Uh, I believe he's looking towards the bases. So I'm going to leave him be. There are bigger fish in the sea, and like I've always said, if you go for the first enemy, you never know what you're going to miss out on later on. And uh, F-105D is certainly looking like a very good candidate for an R60. Remember, you don't have the R60MKs, which are the export variant of the R60Ms, and in the game at the moment, functionally identical to R60Ms. You don't have them. You have the base ones that are on the Russian MiG-15, uh, MiG-15, MiG-21 BIS, and the AV-8A is going to be the first candidate for it. But unfortunately for him, he is going to go for the uh, gun treatment instead. He's good. He's on the ball, he's using the flares, and because he's using flares, I only have two of these missiles. I am not even going to bother. Now, that uh, SRAM definitely didn't appear from nowhere and is definitely not an issue with my internet. Um, I still managed to get away from him because, like I said earlier, you are basically just relying on your speed. If you keep your speed up in this thing, you just zoom around, you can be a missile bus, and you can be a nice support. Now, being a support also means giving F-105Ds a generous hug with an R-60, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. And the Harrier is still lagging behind. I've got plenty of speed here, and the SU-7 is going to deal with the Harrier very, very nicely. Even though it's not going to kill him, it's going to get him off my 6, which gives me enough of an opportunity to nose up and go around for some more fun. Now the F5 has gone onto the SU-76, but because he is so preoccupied, this gives me an opportunity to warm up or to, to uh, ready up a nice little missile for him. And uh, maybe if I'm not going to give it to him, I'm going to give it to the Harrier, because the Harrier has no flares, it's a GR1. These are going to be the easier candidates for your R60s, and it looks like I managed to get a lock here. It's coming in really nice and close. And maybe I can save the SU-7 while I'm at it. I managed to crit the guy, and maybe I've just saved the SU-7. No, unfortunately, the SRAM manages to strike before he dies. So, F5C here. I'm going to pull a nice sharp turn, because this thing has very, very good angle of attack. It's got some very, very good ability to pull. And now that I'm up into a vertical, I'm trying to keep my maneuvers as vertical as possible. And the F5C, I, I probably could have won in this dogfight, but it looks like... My enemies, or my allies, same thing really, are going to get him before me, which is not too bad a thing. Either way, this F-105D is going to present as a nice target as well. If I had an R-3R or an R-3S, this would have been really, really nice. But unfortunately for me, he's just pulling too much uh, altitude away from me to even do anything. So I turn my attention back to the lucky F-5C, who somehow managed to escape death until this point. It looks like he's going into a vertical to avoid the F-104G, but presents himself as a perfect target for me and my GSH-23-2. Perfect kill there, right there. Just a very, very nice, clean kill. So, with all of this kerfuffle going on about the F SPSK and the MiG-21S in this video, which one's the better one? I have to say, they're basically both the fucking same. The only difference is going to be the weapons, and ordnance and anything else that it can carry and you'll never guess it's the german one that comes out on top the mig-21 spsk because it has r60s because it has the opportunity to carry flares and uh i guess makes it more versatile it just simply makes it more versatile this plane has more options and more options are more better so you have to consider that when you're going into a battle what, what enemies are you going to go up against? If you're going to go up against F-105Ds, uh, then R-3Rs and R-3Ss are going to be buttfuck useless to you, because this plane can basically outrun those missiles. However, an R-60 is going to be able to take out those types of planes a lot more effectively, and things like the SPSK come equipped with them, which makes it a lot more of a competitive option. That being said, the MiG-21S is still a very good plane, and is still very enjoyable to fly, albeit in full up tiers, 
you tend to get your ass pushed in a fair amount and it's just not a lot of fun when you're in a full up tier dealing with things like mirages and uh, other 10.7s that might outrun you and out missile you. You don't have any flares so it is fairly difficult but I haven't had a whole heap of these matches. I've had a fair few like 10-0, 10-3 top matches. These are the ones that are going to be your majority I believe unless of course the matchmaker changes in any meaningful way which uh, we'll have to see with our upcoming battle ratings whenever Gaijin decides to post them. So to round off the match here we have an AV8 who hasn't seen me because of the sunset map. It's, uh, it's a very very common thing so keep your head on a swivel if you're ever on a sunset map and of course don't lose your speed because you might end up like this Harrier here who uh, for all the flares and for all the avionics that this guy's got nothing is going to stop you from dying to good old 23 mils. So ladies and gents, that is the MiG-21S and the MiG-21 SPSK. Honestly, I am quite happy with both of these planes. Neither of them are particularly bad. The MiG-21 SPSK is a lot better, but only because it has more versatility. Of course, you do trade a bit of killing power, but just like I've shown you in this match, I'm very, very confident that you can still pull consistent games. For a first time a jet grinder, this plane, honestly, I don't really find it that good for that particular type of stuff. If you're going to be doing first time grinding a new tech tree, or if you've never played jets before, these are hard jets to play. This is not something you just pick up and be a master at. I think you need a bit of practice, and for that, I would kind of recommend the lower tiers. But that being said, if you want to grind out a second tech tree and you've already got some jets, both of these are actually fairly solid options. You can definitely give these a try, but for the Russians, I think the SU-11 is overall a better premium for this tier. The SPSK is also a very, very good one for the German tree, but I think the G91R4 is honestly a little bit better than this, depending on, of course, your matchmaker. The SPSK is very good, but the G91 has a friendlier matchmaker. So ladies and gents, with all of that said, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate you guys being here watching my content all of that stuff. It's very, very heartwarming. And of course, all of the other support is extremely uh, impressive as well, to be honest. So if you guys would like to support me, let me know in the comment section below uh, what you thought of the video for a start. Algorithm helps are beautiful. But of course, in the, um, in the video description, there are plenty of links for you guys to check out merch, Patreon, uh, air models, all of that stuff. Maybe chuck me a follow on Twitch, maybe join the Discord. But uh, until then, Thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll catch you next time.